The Alienware AW3423DW QD OLED Ultra Wide Monitor is almost here. And today we're going to discuss the new PDF files from the Alienware support page and all the details from dimension sizes to how to set up your monitor and even the user guide. This is going to be a lengthy video, so sit back, relax, and let's talk about the Alienware AW3423DW QD OLED monitor. Let's get into it. The Alienware 34-inch AW3423DW QD OLED monitor is fast approaching. Now we have some information showcasing the price and some more features. This is going to be the monitor to get for ultra-wide gaming. And we're going to look at some new information that this PDF file does allow us to see. Again friends, you can see how the overall design of this monitor looks amazing. And we can see here with all the input connections from the power connector to the spotlight port, the joystick, the USB connections, two HDMI 2.0 ports, and a display port. And remember friends, if I miss anything from seeing all these files, please leave a comment down below to make sure it's brought to everyone's attention, but I'll try to cover everything seen here. But here we'll be checking out the technical specifications. Of course, with its amazing three-year advanced exchange service and premium panel exchange, including coverage for OLED burn-in. According to Alienware, if you do have burn-in, they will replace your monitor the next business day. So that's really cool and safeguarding us because I'm sure many of us will be playing this at 16 by nine. It does cover 99.3% of the DCI-P3 color coverage, also to 149% of the sRGB. At 1.07 billion colors, with OLED technology, this is going to look amazing, as Quantum Dot will bring all those colors to life. It does have an anti-reflective coating. We will see once we have this to see how reflective it is. And I hope it doesn't have any hard screen pearl. And here showing the power consumption of 200 watts max with 42 watts in working mode with a standby of 0.5 watts and in off mode of 0.3 watts. So now let's get into the PDF user guide. We will go slow and I will point out the things that I see that catches my eye. But again, friends, leave a comment down below if there is anything I missed so other people who are reading the comments can get more information as more information for everyone is better. And before we begin, if you are finding this video helpful, please leave a like as it helps the channel tremendously. I do have many ideas planned for this AW3423DW in the future when it arrives. Many versus videos. So I would appreciate it if you hit that like to help support the channel. And subscribe if you do want to see more of this Alienware QD OLED monitor. As finally monitors are getting next generation technology, the first in new technology. And that's awesome for us PC gamers. Thanks guys. So here we'll be looking at three pages at a time as I have it set up. Here, of course, the user guide here is with the display, the stand riser, the stand base, the cover, and the Visa adapter, which is really cool. And here showing the power cable, the display port cable, mini display port cable, an HDMI 2.0 cable with the USB 3.2 gen upstream cable. And also we have, like in previous Alienware monitors, an Alienware welcome card. So here are the dimensions you can see. The first number is in millimeters and the second number is in inches. So you can measure on your corresponding desk right now to see if it will fit or to start making room because I know how it is when you want to get a new monitor you already start planning where it's gonna go in your room how it's gonna look what you got to move fun times are ahead and this is really handy right now just so you can see how long how tall the depth all that you can see by these numbers Alienware always includes super packing and I'm talking about thick padded protection on your monitor I got that with my Alienware AW2721D the packaging is phenomenal and I'm sure it'll continue, especially on this QD OLED quality premium item. But you can see here what you're supposed to do. You connect the stand first, then you connect it to the monitor, then you lift it up. Super simple. Hook it up and you're good to go. So now we're into more specifications. Again, covering the color gamut. It does have an NVIDIA G-Sync Ultimate module. It does say 3440 by 1440. And it's also showing here the preset modes with Creator. And we'll see that in a bit. First person shooter, multiplayer, real time strategy, role playing, RPG, sports, and three customizable gaming modes. Also friends, this is a Visa Display HDR 400 True Black and it is flicker free with the low blue light feature. And it does have an ambient sensor detecting ambient light and adjusting the brightness of your display. So that's pretty cool. You can see right there, it is on top of the monitor, showing you the back of the monitor. Super clean, super cool. Again, showing you here the down lights and all the ports that the monitor includes. Here with more monitor specifications, you can see here friends, 0.1 millisecond grade of gray, 1800R curvature, 1.07 billion colors in 10-bit, 149% of the sRGB, and 99.3% of the DCI-P3 color coverage with that amazing OLED contrast. This is going to be amazing. 
and all the integrated and connectivity and the sizes. Here's all the information you need. Again, this is going to be at 250 nits in typical brightness with it reaching to 1000 in HDR peak mode, 21 by 9 aspect ratio. Can't wait to get this. We're super close friends. It's going to be awesome to see all my games in a new light. And here we have the dimensions of the screen and here with more display modes. Also noting here that the 100 input impedance for your headphones. And here is a clearer look at the dimensions so you can measure yourself in your room. Maybe you might want to wall mount this, maybe you're going to keep it on the stand, but here are your options. Here's some more environmental characteristics on your operating and non-operating temperature, humidity, altitude, and thermal dissipation. Here with the USB transfer speed, you can see the speeds here. And with the USB ports, we have one upstream, two in the back, and two on the bottom. And look what it says here, QD OLED monitor quality and pixel policy. During the QD OLED monitor manufacturing process, it is not uncommon for one or more pixels to become fixed in an unchanging state, which are hard to see and do not affect the display quality or usability. For more information, see the Dell monitor quality and pixel policy. Now we do know this has a three-year warranty burn-in, but this is already telling you there might be an issue with a fixed pixel. More information is needed for this section, and I will bring that to you, of course, when I get my monitor or if I find some more information as I'm scrolling. But just be aware, this QD OLED monitor quality and pixel policy should be read more in detail. Now this could be for any monitor, right? Any LCD, IPS, VA panel. There might be dead pixels, but this is a much loved QD OLED technology. It's one of the first, so it makes everyone nervous, right? When we see these things, but hopefully everyone gets an awesome panel so we don't have to worry and get and go through this whole return or issue process. And here even showing you how to be comfortable using the monitor at or below eye level, positioned correctly with your feet and hands so you can have the best awesome experience. <laughs> this is kind of funny and it's kind of cool though. A lot of people need to know how to sit <laughs> and even how to use and view a monitor. But here Alienware has you covered. And of course, always be careful with this monitor, handling and moving your display. Be extra delicate because if you love your monitor, it'll love you back and it'll take care of you and your gaming needs. Of course, here with the maintenance guidelines, lightly dampen a soft clean cloth with water. If possible, use a special screen cleaning tissue or solution suitable for the Dell monitor screen. Using an available dry cloth, gently wipe the film surface in one direction at a time to remove stain or dust. I always use a microfiber cloth for all my iPads and TVs, so try to use something super clean and super soft. But again, I just use a microfiber cloth. Now here setting up the monitor, now this gives us a first look at the box, how it's going to look. Now I'm sure it's not going to come in a, in a boring beige box. It's usually a white box with the monitor on the face of it. But you never know, maybe they're going environmental and we'll be getting this brown box. But this is how it looks and you can see how the monitor is packaged with its thick padding. You could tell when they opened the monitor, but you could see it's protected properly, especially the bottom part screen facing down. That black foam is super thick, so our monitors will be covered. See like number 11, it says to lift it up when it's connected, remove the protecting film, hook up your connections, and you're good to go. It's really foolproof. I haven't seen anyone have trouble connecting this, but still, it is an expensive, awesome, beautiful monitor. You want to be extra delicate with it. Now, this is really cool. Attaching the Visa display adapter. Now, remember, this is just an adapter. You still need the wall mount. You just can't connect this directly to your wall. So you're going to need a wall mount or an arm, but it goes to show you here. I'm going to keep this on the stand as I usually move my monitors around. I am probably going to try to wall mount my OLED TVs and even my Aorus FE43U. But for now, it's just going to be on a stand. I'm going to keep this on a stand. But it's awesome to have this adapter and how they show us how to connect it. Again, so it's foolproof for everybody. Nothing too complicated. Here they're showing you how to use the joystick on the on-screen display menu. If you're used to Alienware or Dell monitors, it's the same way. Kind of bare bones. I wish they would have upped the beautiness or the coolness of the screen of the OSD, like the Samsung Odyssey line of monitors. I really like their setup. It looks really cool, really contrasty. Even the LGs, that kind of gamer look, like the GP950, that's really cool. But whatever, it doesn't matter. We're gonna be looking at the display, not actually at the OSD. But you can see here, preset modes, dark stabilizer. Remember, that is not no black equalizer, but it doesn't matter because this is QD OLED we're talking about. And the blacks will be black, and the contrast will be out of this world. With the brightness and contrast, input source, the volume, and showing you here the presets, there's a standard mode and a creator mode that allows you to set the color space to DCI-P3 or sRGB and adjust the gamma level between 1.8 and 2.6. So that's going to be really cool and fun to test as I love my LG Nano IPS panels with sRGB mode. It's the best of the best and it's really cool to see it being included here with the DCI-P3 color space of that creator mode. So that's going to be really cool to test out. Here we have more preset modes with FPS, RTS, RPGs, sports, game one, two, and three, where you can change the saturation of the colors. 
and the dark stabilizer and of course the color with warm cool and custom color and here's a cool feature game enhance mode where you can have a timer a frame rate display and display alignment here friends with the dark stabilizer which is not a black equalizer this stabilizer improves the visibility of dark gaming scenarios the higher level of 0 to 3 to get better visibility in dark areas of the image the LGs have this and it's here on the Alienware well, that's why the GP950s don't have the same contrast as an Odyssey with the black equalizer they're two different things HDR mode here with HDR 400 true black or HDR peak 1000 so there's two modes and here you can control the brightness the contrast select your input source and of course with the awesome alien fx lighting if you've seen my previous alienware videos i do love to mess around with the alien fx lighting with music and showcasing so check out some of my alienware videos so you can see what i'm talking about and the possibilities and it's showing you here where all the lighting is you got it on the back with the alienware the oval on the back of the monitor the spot down light and the power button so not too much rgb as you can see but it's there and it's going to illuminate and make it look pretty and it's showing you all the modes here with the lighting effects spectrum comet custom color and rainbow cycle and the cool thing is you can turn off the power button zone here showing you the audio and sub menus like just like all monitors have you can set your language the transparency of the osd everything here is included and of course the info tab with the firmware the service tag ambient light sensor which i always keep off and eco mode of course always keeping it off that ambient light sensor might come in handy for many people so check it out and see if you like it now this is really cool it does have oled panel maintenance you can see here pixel refresh to reduce temporary image retention on the screen you can manually activate this function after using the monitor for a couple of hours alternately the function will be activated automatically when you have used the monitor for 4 to 20 hours the process takes about 7 minutes to complete so this is going to try to prevent stuck pixels and also with the panel refresh to prevent permanent image retention caused by static content when you have used the monitor for 1500 hours you can manually activate this function to refresh the pixels alternatively the function will be activated automatically when you have accumulated 1500 hours the process takes about an hour to complete this is again friends maybe a little hassle that we're gonna have to deal with but this is what it is with QD OLED and these things that automatically start will help you prevent burn-in any stuck pixels image retention these features that automatically kick in is a welcome addition to protect our monitors as me I will probably because it's a new technology I'll probably use this monitor only for gaming not so much for editing or anything like that just purely for gaming with a full screen of the 34 ultra wide but hours go by fast when you're enjoying your content so 1500 hours will go by super fast when you don't want to get your eyes off the screen so it's a welcome addition and it's showing you here how it would work so i'm going to leave this here for a bit so you can see what it does and what you're going to be looking at but again friends when you get these monitors you'll be able to test out for yourself and you'll be able to see it and we will go through that i'll probably do that not even for the 1500 hours i'll do that earlier just to show you guys the differences to see what to expect here showing you the tilt swivel and vertical extension of the monitor and of course using the alien fx application that you're going to download to your desktop or laptop to actually access the controls here's some more information with the alien fx window again and how it's going to look on your desktop and how you can save all the functions how you can save and set up all the functions showing you some lighting colors common problems with this technology let's see if we see anything new here of course no video ensure the cable is connected okay if you do see a fuzzy picture blurring ghosting anything like that make sure you're using the cables that came with the monitor if they're cheap if you notice something weird switch it out for a more expensive cable i say that more expensive because you want to make sure your cable is not cheap and i'm probably going to buy a new cable for this qd oled as i want the best of the best if you see anything shaky or jittery you have to reset to the factory settings or check other environmental factors here with missing pixels, OLED screen has spots, cycle power on off, possible solutions again friends, cycle the power, pixel that is permanently off is a natural defect that can occur in OLED technology. I hope none of us see that, first of all, right? I don't want to see that myself. Stuck pixels, again, we have that built-in software tools for the monitor to help with stuck pixels. Brightness problems, here you go, reset the monitor, any kind of geometric distortions, reset the monitor any lines or syncing problems again reset the monitor make sure your cables are correct or change them out if you need to but that's about it friends everything is awesome on this monitor and i wanted to show you this so you know what to expect when you get this awesome panel i myself can't wait to get this monitor it's going to be coming out very soon and it's going to be fun to versus this against all my monitors here on the channel 
especially the new LG C2 OLED 42 inch TV and the Neo Odyssey G8. The cool thing is I'm gonna try to get all these technologies here as that's what I do here. I wanna show all the technologies, not so much of the same technology, VA, IPS, TN, mini LED, OLED, QD OLED to help you make an awesome buying decision for work and play. Remember friends, this is gonna be an amazing year. So please hit that like button if you did find this video helpful and consider being a YouTube member as it will help me be able to do more of these kinds of videos and get more technology here for the channel to help you. Live streaming will begin very soon in a fun and awesome way. So be on the lookout for that and be on the lookout for some awesome, amazing videos on the Alienware AW3423DW as I got a whole bunch of cool ideas. So I appreciate you guys watching this video and accompanying me watching these PDF files as just like you, I can't wait to get this monitor on the channel. So friends, if you found this video helpful, please leave a like, share, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to turn on that notification bell so you never miss out on a future Alienware AW3423DW video. I'll see you guys next time.